All right, so brief introduction to the concept of a set. Um, a set is a Java collection class, um, and we use the word set in computer science much like you use the word set in mathematics, so that's a good thing. Um, here's what makes a set really kind of special. Um, a set is unordered, meaning it doesn't make sense to say what is the first element in the set, what is the last element in the set, there is no ordering to the set. Um, not only is it an unordered collection, the elements in it are unique. We can't add the same, or rather a set can't contain two of the same element, okay? We can add duplicate elements to a set. The set doesn't care, but it only ever holds on to one. If you try to add a second, a third, or a fourth, it's like, yeah, I've already got this in my set. We're good. So my, my mental model I use for a set is just like a bag that you can throw stuff in, but you can only throw one of each thing in it, and there's no order to it. It's just sitting in the bag. It's all like jumbled up together. Um, a good question that you might have is like, this sounds awful. Why would I ever use a set? What if I do want like duplicate elements? What if I do care which one is first? Um, and you're right, if you care about any of that stuff, then don't use a set, you know, use our linked list or something. But often we don't care about that. We just need to keep track of which elements we have and we don't, we just need to know like we have them or we don't, we don't care about the order. And so the set data structure is optimized to be really fast, like crazy fast, like order one fast at inserting, removing and finding elements. Um, and we'll talk more about like, how does it do that so quickly um, in, in a little bit, but then more later in the unit. Um, so a set is faster than a list to insert, remove and find elements. Um, you can still iterate through everything in a set. Think of it as like you had a bag full of stuff and you just reach in and pull something out and you pull something else out. Um, it's just that the order isn't necessarily anything that we would expect or that would necessarily make sense to us. Often we refer to it just as set order, like they come out in an order, but it's not necessarily um, a sorted order, although we'll, we'll talk more about that. Um, set, uh, we don't make a set directly. We choose to either make a hash set or a tree set. Okay, so there's two specific classes um, that we make and, and whether which one we make depends upon um, what requirements we have. So let's actually look at that. Hash set. Hash set is our, our oh, I'm sorry, yes. Is it like random, like you want to grab like a random little piece of that, or? It is not random. So there is an order to it, and there is a repeatable order to it. It's just not, it's the order of their hash codes, basically. Um, so it's not random, but nor is it something necessarily useful to us. Um, so if we can, we prefer to use a hash set because it's the faster of the two sets. Um, the way it actually works internally is the a hash code is computed from the element. It uses the hash code method of the capital O object class to do that, um, which means that the actual class must override hash code and provide a valid implementation to it. The class must also have a valid implementation for equals. We learned a little bit about the equals method um, last year in AP Computer Science. Um, we'll learn more about like how equals really works and how to write an equals method in the in this class, um, which is something that we we certainly didn't do before. So, if we're going to use a hash set, the the type of the objects, the class of the objects in the hash set must properly override hash code and equals for this to work, or else it's just going to fall apart. But it's really really fast. There's also what's called a tree set. Um, and we're going to learn more about trees in chapter 17, um, but it's using a sorted tree structure to store the elements. Um, it's still faster than a linked list, um, but not as fast as a hash set. The elements, the class, the ele class of the elements in a tree set must implement the comparable interface. Uh, you may remember that that has the compare to method. So it determines if two elements are equal or one is less than or greater than the other one. Um, we only use a tree set when we need the iterator to visit the elements in sorted order. So if we actually care about sorted order, we'll use a tree set. It'll be faster than a linked list, 
but not as fast as a hash set. If we don't need to visit the elements in sorted order, we're definitely going to use the hash set much faster. Um, sets are really straightforward. These are the primary methods we care about. This is it. We can add an element to a set. Um, if the element was already in the set, we don't get an exception or anything. It just returns a value of false, which is really convenient. So sometimes we don't want to bother to check if something's in the set. We'll just keep calling add. And if we have duplicates, eh, we don't care. Set doesn't care. It's great. Um, contains is how we check if an element is in the set or not. Just returns a Boolean. Um, and remove, and we specify a value, it will find that value in the set and remove it. Um, it returns true um, if the value was in the set. Um, and it, it just returns false if it's not. It doesn't, again, throw an exception. Okay. So we have a lot of flexibility using these methods. We're not going to get exceptions. Um, we can have some really high-performing algorithms as a result. All right. Let's take a look together at, like, let's make this more concrete. That's all pretty abstract. So, like, what would be a good application of a set? So let's look at our, in our VS code for Chapter 15 class notes, we're going to look at this word analysis file. And I've already done a bunch of imports for us. I've got a little structure of a class here called word analysis. There's a main method here we're going to fill in um, in a moment here. And then I have another method here called read words, um, which will read words from a file. We've already got the Java doc comments here and things. Basically, what we're going to do um, is to read text from a file, um, like a story. Uh, first, we'll just start with some words, but eventually we're going to read in the entire text to Through the Looking Glass um, by Lewis Carroll. Um, and then we can do some simple analysis with it by using sets. Um, we, can, we can say, we can compare the novel Through the Looking Glass with our dictionary um, and do some comparisons there. So let's see how that could, how that could work. Um, so we're going to add some code to the main method first. We're going to kind of program this in a top-down manner. So we're going to start with um, the high-level stuff and then go from there. So let's do that. Let's see. We're going to first, um, we're going to read the dictionary. So there's a file already saved in our GitHub repo, which is a dictionary file. Um, and we're going to read the novel. We're going to read both of those. And we're going to, we don't care about, we just care about if a word is in the dictionary or if a word is in the novel. We don't care about the order. We don't care about how many times. Uh, we just want to know it exists. So perfect application to have a set of strings. So we'll create one variable called dictionary words, which is the set of all words in our dictionary. And we're going to call the method that we'll implement in a moment, read words. And the path to that is inside the source folder. There is a file called words. And then we're going to have another set of strings called novel words, meaning nerd words in the novel, not like unique words, I guess. But it's a set, so they are unique words. I don't know. I guess you can interpret it either way. Anyway, read words. And that is called through the looking glass.txt is the name of the file. You can see these files right here. Here's through the looking glass. Here's words. There's another file here called War and Peace, which is the complete text of War and Peace, uh, which you can play around with later if you want as well. For now, we're just going to assume the read words method works. It opens the file, reads all the words out of it, throws it in a set, returns a set of all the words in that file. So let's just focus on the analysis we can do once we have a set of words. We can do some cool stuff. Here's the first example. First analysis. Let's print all the words that are in the novel, but not the dictionary. So you may or may not be familiar with the writings of Lewis Carroll, um, like Through the Looking Glass, Alice in Wonderland, things like that. Um, 
made up words plays a big role in these books. So we can actually see what are all the words included in the text that aren't in our dictionary, okay? Um, we can use the enhanced for loop with a set. So the enhanced for loop works with sets, yay. So we can just say for string word in novel words. So for all the words in the novel, if not dictionary words that contains words, word. Okay. The syntax of Java is always a little weird with the not operator, but basically this is saying if the dictionary set doesn't contain the word, let's print it out. Cool. That's all it takes. So that little code snippet will base will find all the words in the novel that aren't in the dictionary. And it will do it really fast because sets are really fast. We can also do some simple analysis like how many unique words were in the novel. Let's just print that out too while we're here. System.out.println will say unique words and then we'll concatenate novel words dot size. So the size method works. Um, on a set, just like it would in a list or anything else. There we go. Sorry, my space. I was in the wrong place there. Make sure that system.out.println is inside of the main method. I started typing it outside of the main method. Much better. All right, so we can see how many unique words are in it. Um, let's, do, let's do a more sophisticated analysis. So second example, let's print the number of unique words with greater than three letters. Let's use an iterator for this. So I'm gonna create a new iterator. Now notice I didn't say list iterator, I just said iterator. So this is a more generic iterator. This is a class that can iterate through any collection, including a list, but also a set. Um, and so I'm gonna call the method on the novel words, just called iterator. So if I just want a generic iterator, I invoke the iterator method. If I was on the linked list like we were previously, we could do the list iterator method, but we'll just do the gener generic iterator. All the methods are, the most common methods are all the same. So I can say while i dot has next, just like we did before. And then I can say if i dot next, so that will iterate over the next element in the set and return it. So I can see if the length is greater than, oop, or if it's less than, if it's less than or equal to three letters, I'm gonna remove it. So I'm basically filtering through all the words in the novel and I'm getting rid of all of those that are less than or equal to three letters in length. So I'm only gonna have, all that's left when this is done are the words greater than three letters. So when this loop has finished, we filtered out all the short words and we can just print the long words. System.out.println, unique words. What I mean by that is greater, unique words that are greater than three letters. And we can just print how many there are. There you go, let's call the size method again. Cool. So key things we've seen here so far, we can keep calling the size method and get the number of elements in the set. Um, we can't use a list iterator because it's not a list, it's a set, but we can use a generic iterator, just 
should be careful with my word generic, but capital I iterator. Um, and we can use the same has next, next methods, remove methods that we're accustomed to. Um, and so tomorrow, because we're going to run short on time here, tomorrow we will implement the read words method. So we can actually see um, how do we create a new set? How do we add elements to the set um, as well? And then we can actually see, uh, perform our analysis of through the looking glass. So. Go ahead and commit your changes. I will do the same. And then we are all set. We ran a little bit short on time. But we saw a few good examples. Phones away, like in a bag, in a pocket, not on your lap under the table. Excellent. Um, all right, so we ran a, a little bit short on time, but we saw a couple good examples related to sets. Um, we saw, we haven't yet seen how we actually create a set yet. We're gonna do that in just a moment, but we did see that we could use the enhanced for loop to iterate through the elements in a set. Uh, we saw how we can invoke the contains method on the set to check if it contains an element. Um, we saw that the size method works for sets. We can see how many elements are in the set and a reminder that elements in the set will be unique by definition. Um, we also saw how we could create an iterator, and this is just the capital I iterator class. Um, it is not like a list iterator, so it has more limited functionality, but everything we need for a set. Um, and then we use it almost exactly like we use the list iterator. We're using the has next method on the iterator, the next method to return each element. Um, remember that with a hash set, the order in which the elements are iterated isn't predictable really um, in any meaningful way to us. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If we care, if we want to iterate through them in a particular order, we can use a tree set, um, but often we don't care. And then we saw how we can use the iterator to remove elements from the set as well. So what we need to focus on today is this method here, this helper method to actually read the words from the specified file um, and return a set containing all of those words. So let's let's do that part. We can get rid of this return null. It was only here so that things would compile. Um, but now we can focus on set stuff. So the first thing we need to do is to actually make a new set. But we can't just say new set. We actually have to pick either a hash set or a tree set. Um, and so let's capture a note here about what we care about. We're going to say the implementation, implementation of the set doesn't matter. So store the reference, reference in a variable, variable, wow, of type set. All right, here's what I mean by that. This is a best practice that we totally don't touch it in AP computer science because we have enough stuff going on. Um, but in general, the types we use when we declare our variables should be the highest level type in terms of like the class hierarchy that will fit our needs. Um, so since we don't actually care if it's a hash set or a tree set, this local variable here should be of type set, just a set of strings. Um, now we can't say new set. Um, I believe set is an abstract class. Um, so instead we have to pick one of the specific concrete classes like hash set. So we can say new hash set. Um, and so this code compiles because a hash set is a set. So we can assign it to a variable of type set. That's why this works. The reason why this is a best practice is let's say we go through this and we have all of this code and then, um, Later, we're like, you know what? We actually, we actually need a tree set or we need some other type of set. We have one word to change in this code to make that change and everything else works. If everywhere we had a variable, like in this parameter or in this return type and this local variable, these local variables, if we use the more specific subclass of hash set, we'd have to change all of those everywhere. And that'd be a lot more tedious. So that's why it's best practice to declare the type using the most generic type that does what we want to do. 
Um, I mean, there are obviously limits. We're not going to make every variable an object, right? Because then we can't call any useful methods on it. All right, let's make a new scanner as well. So we'll say new scanner. Um, we're used to using scanner from system.in. We can also scan from a file. So I'll create a new file object based on that file name. So this will create a new file object based on the file name that's passed as a parameter. It passes a reference to that file object, to the scanner. So we'll be scanning through that file instead. We want to basically read all of the words and we want to read one word at a time. Um, but we don't care about like punctuation because we only want the words. So the default delimiters with scanner, you might remember, are white space, spaces, tabs, new lines, things like that. We're going to change that. We want to use any character, character, other than A through Z lowercase or A through Z uppercase as delimiters. And the way we do that, and unless you did an extension previously, you haven't seen this before, there's a method on the scanner object called use delimiter. And we can pass what's called a regular expression um, or a regular expression pattern to describe those characters that should serve as delimiters. Um, Learning regular expressions and regular expression patterns is like really useful. Um, and I don't know if I put it in this unit or if it's in the next one. Nope, not here. Um, coming up as an extension resource. So I always have these extra resources at the bottom of each page. I have an extension resource that links to some good stuff on regular expressions. I just don't have it yet. Um, I use regular expressions a lot just to like manipulate text. Here's the regular expression to say any character that's not A through Z lowercase or A through Z uppercase. So we put our pattern in quotes. We use square brackets to indicate a set of characters. But if that square bracket starts with a caret, that means not. So it means everything except A through Z and A through Z. And then after the square brackets, we put a plus, which means one or more of those. So if there's one or more characters that aren't A through Z, treat that as a delimiter. Okay. So if there's like three periods in a row, it counts as like one delimiter. All right, that's gonna help us out quite a bit. Now we're gonna read through the file, just like we're accustomed to doing when reading from the terminal. And I hope this now like looks extra familiar because when I use scanner, I say while in dot has next, just like the iterators we're using. It's the same technique. It's the same, it is an iterator. Um, so that's why it looks so familiar. All right, so here's another tip that we need to remember. Adding duplicates to a set is ignored. And by the way, so is removing elements that don't exist. What this means is like, we don't need to check if the set contains anything. Instead, we'll just call the add method on our new set. And we're just gonna add whatever it is we read from the file. But let's make it lowercase while we're at it because we don't want to treat like a word with a capital letter and a word with a lowercase letter as two different words. It's the same word. The capitalization is just different. So read the next word from the text, from the file, make it lowercase, add it to the set. And then we can just say return words. We're done. That's all it takes. So one cool thing here is like by using a set, the amount of code we had to write to get a collection of all the unique words in a file was very, very, very little. This is it, which is cool. All right, now the fun stuff. So now that we've written this, we can actually run the main method. 
and we can see all the analysis. All right, these are all the words that show up in Through the Looking Glass that aren't in our dictionary file. Okay. Um, Jabberwocky. Oh, I love the poem Jabberwocky. Uh, Mimsy. Uh, expect boar groves to show up here somewhere. All sorts of good stuff. There it is. There's boar groves. Bandersnatch. So many of these words are from the Jabberwocky poem. There's some weird stuff here. Like there's apparently a URL in the file. Um, there's some Roman numeral page numbers. Some other strange stuff. There's uh, some British spellings. So like color with a U, um, favorite with a U. So that's a little different. But still, it's kind of cool to just see how little code it took to come up with this list of words. And then we can see that the number of unique words in Through the Looking Glass is 3,260. And the number of words that are greater than three letters is 2,999 in the text. Cool. So we performed some basic data analysis of that novel um, with very, very few lines of code. I hope this illustrates the power of choosing the right collection for your application. We could have written this code and used an array list or used a linked list, but a set just fits so well um, and it makes it so much easier. We didn't have to write an algorithm to remove duplicates like we, we wrote last year. Um, we just use a set and it does all that stuff for us. So.